Madam Ogata Sadako served as the first Japanese and first female UN High Commissioner for Refugees. Promoting a field-oriented approach, she worked tirelessly for the peace and development of countries and regions around the world. For a decade starting in 2003, she served as the president of JICA, the Japan International Cooperation Agency. One year after her passing, the JICA Ogata Sadako Research Institute for Peace and Development hosted a symposium to commemorate her achievements and discuss how to best honor her legacy. The event was live streamed around the world and attended by approximately 1,200 people. International dignitaries sent in messages for the occasion. She felt a deep compassion for those suffering and deprived of their human rights and dignity. She was as comfortable and effective speaking to the Security Council or with world leaders as she was sitting with refugees in a camp, listening to their plight and helping find solutions to their challenges. Her conviction that indifference was unacceptable in all of us as individuals, states, the international community, and we, the people of the United Nations, have a responsibility to live and act on the basis of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the Charter of the UN was unwavering. Ms. Ogata left a broad legacy, including the many millions of people who enjoy better lives and opportunities thanks to her efforts. She consistently raised awareness of the specific needs and fundamental rights of refugees around the world through her strong advocacy for human security. In the first half of the symposium, panelists discussed Madam Ogata's unconventional approaches and beliefs. She did something the UNHCR hadn't done before, which was to extend education support to refugees. Education had received less attention, not to speak of higher education. So she set up a refugee education trust fund to solicit donations from the private sector and provided scholarships to refugees. Each individual mattered to her. Through her actions, she constantly demonstrated that the rules are in place to facilitate what needs to be done. They aren't supposed to take precedence or dictate what should be accomplished. Sad to say, about 16 or 17 years ago, all of JICA's decisions were made in Tokyo. The decisions were then passed down as instructions to its overseas offices. Madam Ogata saw the need for change and dramatically shifted the personnel, funds and authority from Tokyo to the front lines. I believe this improved the quality and responsiveness of JICA's operations. Looking at the historical background, the Cold War had just ended. So it was supposed to be a time when people enjoyed the dividends of peace. Instead, conflicts began breaking out around the world between ethnic groups and tribes. This raised new challenges and brought into question how Japan should handle international cooperation. That's when Madam Ogata Sadako appeared on the scene. An outstanding leader, she faced the realities of the field straight on, filled the gap between protection and development, and carved out a new path. In the latter half of the symposium, domestic and international specialists discussed how human security, a concept that Madam Ogata passionately advocated, could be applied to healthcare in light of the COVID-19 crisis. I mean, look, this, this is a global crisis that needs a global response. Um, but as other speakers have said, um, there is, I mean, whether it's vaccine nationalism or a, um, you know, a, a focus on the domestic crisis, um, I think we need to redouble our efforts to work through the multilateral system. And I think even this other networking could help us to see how we could collaborate and share the good lessons learned in one country, which we can use as the developing countries, to see how it would help the developing countries. 
We were suddenly unable to go over and wondered what to do before realizing that we could go online, and this seems to have helped our local staff grow in different ways. In the coming global society, it won't be immediately rectified, but what we need is the ability to moderate. With each standing up for themselves, but also empathizing with others. The basics of human relationships, both on an individual level and an international one. Without it, the societies of today won't be able to overcome this crisis. How can we raise people like Madame Ogata, those who can make a difference in the international community? I think the answer is to keep asking yourself what you'd do if you were involved or the person in charge. What I consider Madame Ogata's greatest legacy is how she changed the scope of UNHCR's role to give internally displaced persons the same protection as refugees. It went beyond the rules at the time, and she was ready to alter the rules to protect people's lives. You can't do that unless you have passion. And in the end, if it's for a good cause, then people will eventually support you. We need to raise young people that have the guts to tackle issues with no clear answers. And that's a trait I'm hoping we can foster throughout Japan. As Madame Ogata demonstrated, the rules are in place to facilitate what needs to be done and should not take precedence. The global community is currently facing an unprecedented crisis, and Japan's stance towards international contributions is once again being challenged. <laughs>